did some really fine research on the importance of having city parks have swimming pools, basketball hoops, things that were of importance to the neighborhood, actual, found actual research. Uh, it was fascinating with the um, mortality rate of people who never learned how to swim was, was part of it. And so they made the case that we needed to keep a swimming pool for swimming lessons for poor children. Of course, you know where that went. You, you see the pool, the pool is gone. Um, in more recent times, the, that park has been used for for-profit events. I mean, it's a public asset. Free CDC will manage it for 99 years, including the parking garage underneath it. And um, in, in every way, people are excluded from the park. Um, when we went to the symphony on Saturday night, the, um, we, the park was closed off and a ticketed event was going on in the park. The, the kiss was a wine tasting food, some, I'm not quite sure what it was. And when we walked up, up the street, a woman who had just received some food from one of the church groups said, well, I guess I can't take this over and eat in that park. Here she was closed up. She was eliminated from the park. Um, but the ticketed event, somebody was making, some buddies were making money. Um, in the overall renovations that have happened, the preferred developer, 3CDC, has to all appearances largely ignored the overall comprehensive plan. A bunch of people, including some in this room, have worked very hard on the comprehensive plan. It's a magnificent document that has pictures and charts and drawings and the research behind it, and it, it appears to be largely ignored. Called for a combination of affordability and housing at different levels. It did not call for exclusion of anybody at either end of the spectrum. It was inclusive, and it has largely been ignored. Um, uh, rattle on here a couple of other things. The, the strategy to remove the drop-in center um, was called the Homeless Homes Initiative. The research that was done for Homeless Homes um, finally became ordinance. Um, I was on the committee, and I don't believe it had anything in it about relocating the drop-in center. It was interpreted that way, and then soon the developer assigned to make that happen was 3CDC. So that's, and the um, removal of, or the separation of the services in the drop-in center, moving the men to one location and the women to another location, um, was clearly not in that initial report. So I had to see that. Um, similarly, the gospel mission is being removed. Um, Emmanuel Community Center is now closed, and that's upscaled. Um, and, in some ways, um, this narrative that is now about, about the renaissance of over the Rhine, the wonderful renaissance of over the Rhine, somebody the other day said to me, you don't call it over the Rhine anymore, it's OTR. Uh, it's you know, built as a destination, experiencing this wonderful renaissance, using public money to bring for-profit businesses back and to virtually eliminate affordable housing. This morning's paper has the article about the um, council yesterday approved the um, Finley Market um, redevelopment plan and four of 14 housing units are to be at the affordable level. Only at the affordable level is listed at 80% of the area median income, which is by how many? 30, well, to family four, we made 56,000. 56,000. Um, that bears, that bears watching. But at least it did have one concession to there needs to be some affordable units. Um, I will stop there. We could go on and on. We haven't even gotten to the Anna Louise story, but that's okay. Sent the book to the publisher before the Anna Louise and the Newmont was known. But in any case, 
Let me turn it back over to Tom, who can help with some theoretical basis for this and some other, other tracks of the same story. 